let's get it started. Hello, once more. Um, I'm Sarkis, um, more than 10 years in the industry. Uh, uh, do all of you understand English? Yeah, yeah. So uh, you can also ask me questions in Russian, so it's fine, but um, most probably I will answer in English. <laughs> But later we can also net do, do some networking beside the workshop in Russian too, so it's fine. So um, today we are going to talk about how to uh, dockerize uh, the Selenium runs. Um, uh, this is some. Uh, it's it's uh, as I already said. This is this going to be workshop. So I see that you come with the laptops. It's good. So um, I will try to use all the one and a half hours to help you. Uh, if we will finish with all the stuff that I want to present about the dockerizing the stuff, uh, we can use the time uh, to answer to other questions. It could be related to the coding, Selenium, setuping, and stuff. So, but uh, as we are come together for the dockerizing the Selenium, Selenium uh, runs, uh, let's uh, let's get started with that. So, um, I already said I don't want to go much about myself if. Uh, right now, I'm working for the PixArt as a director of the quality insurance. So, um, also, you have uh, some present from the PixArt. The five people who are going to be more active during the workshop will get some prizes, like T-shirt stuff. Um, so, we try to be active to get the prizes. So, and yeah, this is kind of um, agenda. In the beginning, for the 10, 15 minutes, I just want to give some small theoretical stuff. Um, so uh, just theoretically understand what's going to happen when we, when we are doing that decreasing stuff. Then we'll go to the practical stuff and we'll start to live coding and running all the stuff. Um, did you install all the stuff that I sent pre, pre in the preconditions? You have it. So um, if I will show with the Mac also. Uh, some of you have, and if you have a Windows, uh, we can try to configure on it. So I didn't try on a Windows, but if you have a Linux Ubuntu stuff on your computers, it's totally fine. It's the same as the, as the MacBook. So uh, I'm I'm pretty sure that we can figure out for the all the OS because there are support for it. So let's get started with that. So there is a, a bit of like short, I shorted out the information from the documentation. Just um, uh, we, I, I need to, you to understand that what is the Selenium grid. So who is the similar with the Selenium grid? Yeah, it's actually like um, smart proxy, which is uh, which is routing the commands to the web uh, web browser. Um, so th th there are more information, the theoretical stuff. You can read it later, but the basically. Here you can see um, this is the hub, and this is the nodes. Yeah, this is the basic uh, Selenium grid with the nodes. Yes, and um, what actually hub doing? It's managing, accepts the request, run the test, takes the instructions from the client, and execute them remotely on the nodes, and manage the threads. So, and there is a nodes. It's a place where the browser are living. Inside the nodes, we are opening the browsers usually. So what we are going to actually do, we are going to dockerize it. So, uh, which means that every piece of this infrastructure will be run in the Docker container. There is an official um, images published by uh, Selenium creators. Uh, there is a Selenium hub, and there is a Chrome and the Firefox nodes. Today we are going to uh, dockerize the Selenium run in a three ways. I will not say which one is better. I mean, they are have their like positive and the negative parts, but you can choose for your case which one is better for you. The first one we will talk about like pure Selenium images dockerized with this. The second one we will talk about the Selenium, which is open source from Zalando, which is like a uh, German uh, startup. And uh, the third is the Selenoid, which is um, 
uh, from Russian committers, so it's open source from Russia. Uh, so we will have these three, um, uh, three ways of dockerizing the Selenium round. So um, for now, I would like to uh, make sure that all of you have these code examples in your laptops. This also was sent in the, in the pre-steps, uh, pre what you need to do. Uh, there is a one um, GitHub repository which contains the code. Do you have all of you this once? Did you clone it? So, uh, starting from now, I'm gonna... Uh, uh, did, did you join to the Telegram channel that I posted in the main channel? Huh? Okay, good. If uh, it's, It will be better to join to the Telegram channel from your laptop because I will send the code so you can just copy and paste because that will be long ones sometimes. Um, so basically, GitHub. Let's try it. Okay, so we are having an issue with the internet in the beginning. That's not good. Um, I hope that we will have no I issue, but in case I still have my hotspot. Oh, here we Okay, here is the public repository. I guess you all of have, so uh, if you didn't, just go ahead and uh, clone. So, to be more specific, let's start and do it together. Yeah. Is this visible to you, or should I make it bigger? Fine. Okay. Okay. So if you didn't, so let's do it git clone. Oops. This should be very fast. Here we're done. So, um, and then use some code viewer to open the project. And here's the project. The only thing to... M uh, did you try to run on your machines, the tests? They are working or not? Yep. Working? All of, all of? If not, just let me know right now because later you will skip everything. Yeah? You have an issue? Okay. So just follow me. If you didn't fix, I will come to you. Uh, just go to the configuration base, and there is a, this um, true make it false. Yep. Is it? Let me make it bigger. Oh, let me find it. Yeah, here, just make it false for the beginning. Later, when we'll dockerize, it should be true. And just... Um, f 
from the presentation, I can send. So you, you, you all done this step, yes? You, you have to clone the code. So you just do this Maven clean install, which will compile our Java code. OK. I will send it in the channel. And let's do it in the terminal. So uh, later we can uh, go to the configuration part, um, which m to show how actually the, you know that for the Selenium we need the drivers, yes? In this script, there is a plugin, Maven plugin, which automatically downloads the, all the drivers for you. So to run this uh, project, you don't need to download Chrome driver or Gecko driver separately and uh, place in your laptop and uh, give the path. Because I use uh, Maven plugin, which is just you give the version of the, of the, of the driver, it's going and downloading it for you. Yeah? Later, if we have uh, extra time, we can talk about that if you are interested. If no, in the discussion zones, we can go through that. Yeah? If there's something, just make the notes. We can use these two days to talk about the issue. So, and then um, we can run this command. I will send it again here. This should run all the tests in the parallel with the six threads. Yep. This is uh, some open source project that I deployed in Heroku. So we will work against it. So it's always public. You can use everything that I'm showing here for you. You can use it from home too. I mean, you can try to play with it at home. So uh, everyone has these steps done. Did it work for you? Yeah. Yes? Okay. Yes. Okay. I mean, I couldn't the data from Can you re-import it here? Oh, you have many. Yes, you have some. You have uh, some s art like different artifacts for your work, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is blocking this. Um, I can rename this. Oops. Later you can open it to, to make it continue to work for your work. Mm -hmm. Right now, it will resolve everything. Do you have a mobile phone with you? Oh, yeah. yeah, first of all, you need to download it in, in your phone, registers with your number as a WhatsApp, oh, okay. and then uh, you can open also it here. Okay. It's Telegram for Mac. Then it's to this one. Okay. Oh, you still have an issue. Can you can you um, restart after the change? Then it try it again. Um, I guess you have some uh, like mirroring of the artifact. So, r rest of you. The same issue? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Uh, do you have I already okay, can you open this? 
you need to uh, open this is in the editor so you can edit the code. Do you have an IntelliJ or Eclipse? Yeah, just open in Eclipse. Yep. So rest of you running, running, running. Mm -hmm. So I have a code and uh, is there enough points from how to start? Do you have uh, IntelliJ or something to open your code? Uh, code that's Did you done all the three steps that I sent? Yes. Uh, I have uh, the name. Yeah. This post. Yeah, and yes, yes. So uh, you need to uh, like download the IntelliJ ID so to open the code to view the code. Uh, where it is. It's the same program that I open in there. Like. Okay. There is a free version. Just download and open the code so you will continue. Okay. So at least majority have the running this one, yes? If you have any like issue that we cannot solve right now, just peer, peer with someone in the group, and then later we can like make it run on your exact on your laptop, okay? To not lose like time. So, um, Again, I will go here fast, and then I will send you the commands, and we can we can run it uh, together on the Docker containers. Yeah. So this is the same um, as before. So let's skip this one. So just check that version of the Docker that you have installed the Docker in your computer. If you do Docker minus V, it should show you the version which means you have installed Docker. Yep. Java version, it sh should be above 8, so I send you the 8, so if you have it, cool. Maven minus V, which will show you the version of the Maven. It's th this is all that the uh, steps that I sent so to install. And there is a Docker Compose min minus V. This should come with the Docker. So if you have a Docker, you should have Docker Compose also together with it. Yeah, but just in case, check. Yeah. And also there is a Docker machine, which is again coming with the Docker. So this one is mainly I post it for the people who are using the um, Windows. So if there is that there is some limitation using a Docker with the Windows, we can create a Docker machine with the Linux in it. So and they run the Docker uh, engine inside the in, in, inside the Docker machine, and then connect to it. So. so the first of all, when we are starting the the containers, as as I already showed, there is a different containers. Yes, there is a hub, and there is a nodes. So it means they could they, they could have we could have some ten containers, which one is a hub, and nine of them nodes to run in a parallel. To create a visibility between these these all containers, so we first of all we are creating the, the network and we are putting all these containers in one network, which will ensure us that all the containers can see each other. Yeah? The first step actually we are creating the uh, network. And then we are starting, uh, we, we, this, this is the running the standalone for the Chrome, which inside contains the, um, contains the uh, hub. And then we're going to run the Chrome node. And we just give it network grid, which means that we are part of the grid network, so it will have a visibility to the hub. Yeah? And then giving the version. Uh, also, there is the host Selenium Hub, so it will see the hub. And then I'm mounting the the, um, the like the directories to see from your local machine some files that it needs to write and take it. And then when we run it, we will see the hub. So this is the hub with the one Selenium node. Yeah, let's do it together. 
Yes? Um, greed will be one, but the nodes can be more. Like separate, like two, two grids, yes. Usually, yes, you can. But, but you don't need, because we'll go another examples which will after scale. You don't need to scale by default manually, yeah? So, the first one uh, that we talk about, it's a grid. It's, it's a, so, sorry, not network, yes. This is the command to create the network. Okay. So, this I guess a bit small. I can make it bigger. Uh, appearance. Okay. Mm it's better, yes. So, Docker network create will create a network for us. So, this is the network. So, if we want to check um, uh, the, the network that we have created, there's a Docker network PS. Yeah. LS, sorry. Oop. Oops. Yes, ls. So I have this created, and we will use the grid, which is bridge between the containers. Yes. The next step, uh, we need to run the standalone. Um, I will are you following in the in the chat? Yes. If you have issues that we can like, fix right now, just let me know. Yes, um, you, we, we can talk later with, with your case because you have a different configuration of Maven. Yeah. It's installed? Cool, cool. Okay, so running this one, I mean you could have, I will have a faster way because during the night I downloaded all the Docker containers just in case if there is an issue with the internet, we will have something to see. Yeah. It's not solved. We can, uh, let her just come to me, we can, we can take a look on your case. But still, you can continue with the dockerizing, just we will not be able to run the example, Letter will fix it. Yeah? Uh, it's SQA days. Um, No, 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 no. You will have the same. Did you did you download it? Yes. It started to download. Yes. No, no, but uh, so the c should I copy this or like should I enter the, the ID of my uh, no, 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 no. Network? Just just do this. Until what? Uh, all. All of this. Yes. This okay. One? Yes. Okay, I have it here. Okay. Yeah. Just run it. Oops. Yes. This will uh yeah this will download. Cool. Thanks. Is downloading? Yes. I hope that in finger crossed that we will have a better internet connection to make sure it, it will download all for you. But these ones are small. Um, so when we do this, actually, we can see already something here. We go to localhost 444. Ah, we have a hub here running. So you will have exactly the same when the downloading will finish. I'm just going on. But if we go to the console, there will not be any node because we just spin up the hub and we still don't have a node. Yes? So, I will go one more step uh, forward and then uh, when you download, you can try exactly the same. So the next step is the another Docker container. We should an download another Docker container, which is the Selenium node, and we should connect to exact the same network and the hub. So, th 
this is the command for it. And what we are actually doing, again, we are mentioning where you have to run. I guess this is not the all the command. There's something, oh, okay. Okay, so. <laughs> so again, we are, we are mentioning that you are in the grid, so it will have a visibility to the hub, and we are connecting to the Selenium hub that we run here. So we are giving the same host, so they will see each other, and they will connect it to each other. Yep. Again, when you do, it will download. Um, but Is it downloaded already or no? Yes. Oh, cool, we have internet. And I downloaded the Second one. Okay, so it means that we have internet, so. <laughs> That's good. And now when we go and take a look here, oh, -ho, we have a node here. So, but as we don't have a scaling here, when it means that we have just one browser. Yeah? So, let's make the magic happen right now. So the one that we make a false, we put it true. Is it clear what, what is this one? This property? Yeah? Because you run it twice. <laughs> if you run it three times, you will have a three. But this has no after scaling. Yeah? So when we give a true here, and later we use this one to check whenever there is a remote driver or a local browser. Yeah? So when it's true, we are initiating remote driver. And we have a method here which is create remote driver. For the remote driver, we need to specify the link of the driver. So we created the dr like remote um, server already with the dockers. So when you uh, go to the browser and write like localhost 444, you see something, then we have it live. And with the capabilities, we are giving it Chrome, Firefox, etc. Everything I will show today for the Chrome, but exactly the same, you can just change for the Firefox if you need. Yep. So right now, if I will run the tests, nothing will be opened in my local machine. So the browser, I will not see any browser because browser will go to this host and it will be opened inside the Docker container, yes? So let's try it. And the thing that we can see here, what's happening when it starts. Oh, uh, sorry, I need to compile first because I made a change. Okay. You need to recompile your code because we, ch we made a change there. And then run the tests. Yeah, and here you will see that it's busy. The node is busy and there is a five request in the queue because we are running with the six threads, but we have uh, only one node, which means the node is get, like, keeping the queue how many of them should come, yes? Uh, and, yeah, and it's done. Basically, what we can do, so if we have uh, six nodes, uh, we can check. Let me show you. In any case, you can do docker, ps, you will see all the running containers. Right now we have, I have in my machine two, which is uh, one node and one hub, yes? If you run once more uh, the command that creates the node, this one, which is node, yes? And then make the docker ps, we will have a three, three images running, yes? And after a while, you will see the second here, yeah. With the same logic, I can do one more, 
Yes, and one more. And then refresh here, and one more, come. Okay, so right now I can run parallel four threads, which means when I run the tests from the, um, from the command line, yes, there will be less queue. Yeah, because four of them already running and just a two in the queue. And when someone is finished, it will take the one of them. Yes, and then finish. So if later you have a time and you will compare these running times, you will see that we are like squeezing the running times. If I will go and uh, take the same, take a look of the running time. This is the compiling. Yeah, now we, we get to 14 seconds. When you run in a single thread, it takes like a minute. Yeah? With adding the nodes, we are squeezing the time of the run. So this is the main, uh, one of the main ideas why we need to run in a Docker and a parallel to get a fast feedback and run it faster. And uh, yep. So did, have you been able to do something, you there? Is it worked? Comments? You, do, you, you are not in a, but you don't. You are not in a channel, Telegram channel. Come on. Uh, you are in the main channel of the Telegram or no? Yeah. Uh, just search there. I send there another channel. Yeah. I didn't want to spam it here, but. No other one? Please. Is there anyone who, ha who are not in the channel? Guys? Ask the questions, ask the questions. Don't, don't uh, just uh, wait until we like, run a bit. Yes? Telegram? You do you have a Telegram? No, 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 I don't. I don't have. Uh, just, just install it there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone who has a possibility in the channel, please run. If you have an issue, just let me know. Just good. So you have it running, yes? It's run, 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 at least for several, okay. So you are becoming the, uh, the expert, so you have, to, uh, you have to help others after the workshop, yeah? The ones who had the problem, you see the guys who, is, who, is able, who was able to run it right now here, just use their resources also to gain the information. I will be there also, but just remember the faces. I remembering, so. Good. So this was the version of the, the, the first version. We ran the we dockerized the run using the Selenium official containers. So there are a lot of uh, situations. For example, in my case, when I was working for the uh, last time in, the, uh, in in one company, we were having 8,000 Selenium tests. Yeah. But we had the infrastructure which was able to run 8,000 Selenium tests during the 45 minutes using the Docker's. Yeah? But in this case, if we, are, we were doing like 25 threads, it means that we had to create 25 nodes, yes? And we need to have a like, very powerful machine to hold all this infrastructure. Yeah. Um, for this reason, there are some people Local host, sorry, and four four four. Local host two dots four four four. Yeah. Um, so there are some people who are say, okay, this is a good solution, yes, but it's not scalable. I mean, we manually scale it. We say three, four more threads, and then, and then what happened? The machine is like poof. 
it cannot hold anymore. So, but there is a possibility for auto-scaling. So in one case, you need to run in a four threads, in one case, in a five threads. So when, there is a, when I'm running in a five threads, why I need to create all the machines? Yeah. Um, so going forward for the next section of the, of the workshop, we'll, um, I will show you some examples of the re-implementation of the Selenium Docker. Yes? You can. Um, there is a huge preparation to do this. No, not a huge, but there's a apps, and you need to VNC, and uh, you need to download instead of the instead of the the node node VNC, and then it will be open the port for you, so you can connect and see what's happening inside. Why I skip that one? Uh, because next, during the next version of it, I will show. <laughs> because I cannot show all of them. Yes? What do you mean exactly by scaling it, uh, Docker containers? Scaling, uh, I mean when you, for example, you, need, you, you don't have an exact amount of the containers, but it, it will auto scale when you request. I will show you. So if there is a five request coming from the Java, it will create a five containers and will use for it. And then you finish, it will destroy it. This after scaling for uh, for keep, like, keeping a free memory and uh, don't 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 waste the resources at all. Yeah. For now, to be able to continue, what we need to do, actually, we need to go to Docker PS. We need to kill all this. Yeah, because we we're gonna use the same ports for showing another example. Uh, so we need to clean up after ourselves. Uh, I could. I will send you the command that will do it for you. So basically, if you do it one by one, what you need to do? You copy this, you do docker stop, and then give the hash code of the, of the container, and it will stop the container. And then you can do docker rm, and then remove it. Yes? But there is a magic way of... Um, also, there is a command that shows the docker ps I showed you, which is give you all the stuff. So basically, there is a command that you can just say... This is not... You just say, stop all the dockers. Yes? I will send you the command. And this, this will stop all of them. And then we can do the same. We say docker remove all of them, rm, and it will be removed. So it will be faster. So I'm sending you the command. You do docker stop all the containers and docker rm all the containers. So we are cleaning up our machines to go for the next example. So? Can you resume, a after uh, resume, you can resume after stopping, uh, but you cannot resume after removing RM. But uh, afterwards, you can create a new one. I mean, you don't need to keep it. Because, yeah, because you cannot remove the running container, you have to stop, yeah, you can't remove. So to remove, you have to stop, then remove. Yes? If you want to integrate this with the CI, do you have to create Docker each time, or like you, use the, you create them one and you use them in another? For the CI, the next examples are better. Uh, because th this is, I mean, th this is the example that I will not suggest you use for the real one. Uh -huh. And you will ask the question why I'm showing this, because the core is this. If you understand how these ones are working, it will be easy to understand how the complex ones are working. So if, you, if I will explain only the, the complex one, you will not understand what exactly happening under it. So now I will make the connections so it will be clear for you why we did it. Yeah? Okay. So we did here. Yeah, I have also here the commands. So how to remove it. Later I will sh share the slides, so I mean you will have this all in the chat and in the sli slides also. Oh, 
there is a one cool, cool thing called uh, Docker Compose. Do you know what is it? Docker Compose. No. Docker Compose is a very cool thing. You saw how long are the commands? Sometimes, the, and this is the simple one. So if you, ha you have a, some uh, real project which has something to mock and do something extra stuff, the command is getting longer and longer. Docker Compose is the small application coming with the Docker, which allows you to create one file and put a lot of stuff, the, all the parameters that you are giving from the command in the file. And then when you want to run the command, you're just saying Docker Compose up. It's going to creating all the stuff. I will, I will show you. Um, if you open the project that I send you, I committed here Docker Compose file, which exactly the same that we run with the docker run command. Yes? Um, with, with this docker compose file, I'm saying just run two containers. One is the hub, one is the Chrome node. Yes? If you want to run five nodes, you just copy this Chrome part and pass it five times here, yeah, in the file. Yes? Uh, Uh, in the previous example, we run two, two do images, yes? One is a hub, one is the node. Uh, and then we, we duplicate node several times, yes? So here, if you want to duplicate, you copy this one and paste it there. Order? No. And then, when you go to the command line, this is the easy way to do, actually. Okay. Yes, we do. Um, actually, let me copy it to not make it boring. What I, what I'm actually doing, I will send the command to you too. Okay. What actually the command is doing? It says Docker Compose is the command, and I'm showing which YAML file, and this file is located in the in the code. Actually, it's not the right place. Let me see. The you have to be in, th in this folder. Like, change the directory to this folder that you uh, clone the, um, uh, the codes. Yes? And then here, you just run it. Oops. Command B. This is automatically creates for your network. And then creates the hub and the node. Uh, it, it was easy, yes? Yeah. Then the full command. But, but again, I'm coming step by step, so you will understand what actually this is doing when you are running this. It's under it, it's running the same command that we did. And then after this, you can again go here and see that there should be one node running. And the fun part, instead of removing all of the dockers and stuff, actually you can uh, do this docker ps and see that there is also these two containers running. But the fun part is when you want to remove all the stuff, you're going to saying doc docker compose, again showing the file, and they saying just down. And it's removing all of it for you. Good? Should I send you the command for the down? Okay. Oops. Where is the telegram? Down. Good? Make it faster? Do you want to make it more faster? <laughs> so, let's continue. We did this demo and let's go for Zelenium. Have you ever heard about Zelenium? No? Yeah? Yeah, there's one. No. Have you ever heard about uh, Zalando? Yeah, yeah uh, people living in Europe Union for sure know Zalando. Yeah. It's kind of a copy of the Amazon for the e EU countries. Yeah. It's the most successful startup from Germany. This is just theoretical information. Yeah? They have online shop, and the success of Zalando started when they said, okay, you can order the shoes, 
and then you can return it if you don't like it. It was the first online shop who was getting the return for the shoes. And now they are like huge uh, online online platform for the, for the shops. The technical guys from Zalando, two of them, say, OK, this Docker container looks cool, but it's not scalable. I mean, I need to hard code. If I need a five container, I will run it five. If I need a 10, I have to run it 10 times, yes? So they create one, one smarter um, like one smarter uh, hub, which says, I will create for you the containers. Just run the hub. If I get the request, I will create the nodes on the spot. Yeah, if you request me five threads, I will create a five container for you. Yeah? Um, this is two comments that, that one of the... Um, issues that this solution has. They have a huge containers, which is more than one gigabyte. But you download it once. Yes. Right now, I would ask you to, um, to do this pool, two pools, uh, to download later to not lose the time on the downloading. This is one. And this is two. Just download this uh, container so later we will faster use it. Um, for the Zalenium, actually, if you want to get more theoretical information, what it's actually doing, um, actually, I talk about that. I mean, if you go to the SK days 24 in the YouTube, I have a talk about Zalenium, like full path of the Zalenium. So if you are interested to get more information, what it's actually doing, how it's scaling. Also, did you know about the SOSLAB? SOSLAB, browser stack. Yeah. Um, this, these are the on-demand ser services that creating all these hubs and the nodes for you, and you just have that link that we are now posting localhost, you are getting your special link with, the, with your key, and you are running on their service. You don't care about infrastructure. You just pay them and do it. And Zalenium also has integration with the SOS Lab. For example, uh, right now we did for the Chrome. We easily can do for the Firefox, for Opera, but when it's coming for the Internet Explorer, we are stuck because uh, yeah, there is no Windows supporting Docker. Like there, there is no possibility to run the Windows in the Docker. So it means we cannot do that. Um, so in this case, Zalenium has a good, um, uh, I mean, it, it also has uh, Selenoid, but there is a good way to integrate it. And when you integrate it, uh, it says, if there is a Chrome, create the image. If it's a window, just send it to like SOSLAB. In this case, when you have Internet Explorer, only in that case, we are going to SOSLAB. You're spending less money and you're getting more benefits. Yeah? Combining these two solutions. Are you downloading these two? Yeah? For the Zalenium, actually, you just go, oops. You just go to Zalenium. Oops. Oh. Yes. There is a GitHub repository, it's open source. One day you can contribute for it if you have a good ideas to fix some issues. You just uh, create a pull request and uh, they will review and they will merge. And there is also their website which gives a lot of information. Yes, we'll, we'll use some of this one today. But if you want to make it like advanced use, yep. For example? Uh, I don't know, local, some local SCMs, for example. I'm not sure, I didn't use it. But um, um, for the Selenoid, uh, which is the next example, I know that you can also use for Appium, for the mobile apps, to scale the mobile apps running with the Appium, and also for the mobile browsers.
Yeah, yeah, yeah. For the Opium, there is a different story. And you are just dockerizing the Opium server and the connecting the device to the, to the Docker. And, the do and, uh, and then uh, this, this Docker is sitting in the uh, GoGrid router. And when the GoGrid router gets the request to run the test, it's finding the which, which Docker is free with the phone. It's connecting to the phone. So it's after scaling and uh, after routing the requests. Yeah. Yep. Good. So you can you can take the old information here for the for the Zelenium. Do you want to have a break or no? No, no. If you if you need a break, just let me know. We can just break for a five minute. Yeah. Here the 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 commands will will, will be longer. Uh, okay. Again, similar command. Instead of the Selenium hub, we are creating Selenium. We are mounting the ports. We are saying that the port of the Docker container is the same as uh, our local machine port. And then mounting the, um, uh, the folders. And uh, actually, what's the Selenium doing? It's, it can record all the run and create the videos for you. Till now, I cannot say why you need it, but it's fun. In my 10-year experience, I never had a situation to say, if I had a video, I could solve this issue. Because always screenshot was enough for me. I mean, if you have good logging, you are logging the stuff, etc., it's totally enough for me. But uh, having the video recording is a fun. At least for me, it's only fun. But a lot of people say that it's helped them a lot for doing the daily work, etc. But still. So we are also giving the folder for the videos. Yeah, and then uh, using the Docker, it, did it finish downloading? No. no. It will be a bit long because it has a gigabyte or something. And it's a break everyone using the internet. Yeah, but when it downloaded, so just check that we don't have anything running. Yes, we are free. After the one, we will run the Command that I showed. This run after after you download the images. So I guess I have downloaded it. If they didn't give a new version during the night, uh, I should have it. Okay, I have it. And the next one. So if you are downloading once, it keeps in your local machine. And when, you have, uh, when they release a new version, only in that case, it's just downloading the difference. You know that the Docker is uh, downloading by the layers, yes? You see that the layers. So when they release something, the Docker will only download that the change, like, uh, like how it's the Git, Git working. It only keeps the changes, yes? He is also the keeping the changes. So when you once you download, then it's faster. So it's the hardest one to download it once. But if you have a good internet, it's not a problem. But we are now in the conference. And the Zelenium, I should have you. Yes. Now, let's. Um, I will show you how it's working, then we'll do it in your computers. So when we do this, It's starting the hub and then starting the node. So you have the configuration to say when you start it, for example, just create three nodes on the spot. And then if they I will need, you will add four, fifth. So the three of them, for example, always will be created. And then the, the rest will be after scaled. So right now, if we go to the Yeah. We can have it. Yes. But uh, but this is the Zelenium already. The Zelenium is the s it, they are using the same dockers. Exactly the same solution. They just make it like scalable and stuff. So I will show the change like difference. And uh, here in the c in the default configuration it creates two nodes which contains 
one Chrome browser and one uh, Firefox. For the pure solution of the Selenium, for the, for example, for the Firefox, we should have to c download another image, etc., do the configuration, put in the network keys, everything done by, by, by itself so, for you. So there is one place, say it, admin life. Why, why this solution is also good? So you can see your browser. You are asking the question, how? It's really easy because they integrate the VNC with the grid. So while you are running, you can see what's happening with your tests. Sorry? Uh, you write here grid admin life. This is hidden. There is no link, but I will send it to you. Is it downloaded already? Yeah. Oh, cool. Not so bad. Not so bad. So this is the place. So there is also another uh, another place that you can check. It was, if I'm not mistaken, it was dashboard, dashboard. No, grid dashboard. No. Oops. Yes, dashboard. And here you can see the runs, the last runs that you can see. We will, yep. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, you didn't, I guess, sorry, Docker PS. Because you have this already, uh, I send you these two commands, which is cleaning up for you. Just one, two, and then remove them. Yeah, and then, yeah, quite okay. good. For now, I will go and I will run the same test that we are running against Selenium. Okay. Is it interesting? Is it helps you to understand? If, if, uh, if I'm talking a bit of like with hard to understand, just let me know. Yeah? And um, ask the questions. Yes? Uh, the same? Um, wait, wait, wait. Let me show. Oops. Mouse, where are you? It's the failing test integration test that we always have it. So when I run it, I should be a bit of fast to be able to show you what's happening here. Yeah, the browser is there. And then we can see that the tests are actually running inside. And uh, on the spot, it will create more, but it needs a time. But it's after, yeah. You see, automatically it's create the next one to to extend the run. And as they're there, you see, and then when it's finished, it will kill off all of them. It will not keep in the memory. Mm -hmm. Running? Yeah, it is, it's the server is running. I will show you how to. You 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 can hide it. To run, ah, you, you you can just do command T and use a new tab. Later, I will show you how to hide it. Just do not see. When we do it with the with the Docker Compose, the Docker Compose will help us. Like you do minus D, and it's hiding the log. So, yeah, I will show you. It's coming. Yeah, and then you will have all all the videos of running the tests here. Videos? Uh, it's saved in your local machine, actually. Uh, it, when we are giving the command, it's, it's uh, actually keeping in, in, in the hardware. So you can just copy and paste it from there whenever you want. Yeah. Like physically files in the machine, which one is running the dockers. Because we are, when we are, um, I will show you um, the place. 
yeah, we say that the temp videos mounting to this. So which means one of these is the local machine uh, folder, another is a Docker. So it's mounting, so in the end, it's keeping in your machine. And then, yeah, if it's interesting for you, you can watch all the videos here, how it was running. And there is the information in which browser it was running, and then everything you need. Of course, the default time zone is a Berlin, because they are living in Berlin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, and, yeah. Yes, for the I will show fun with, with the co Docker Compose. You can turn it off or on. Yes, logs. Yes, it's the actually. Where is it? Yes, it's hard for me. There's a two. One is the Selenium log, and there is a driver log. This is you know that in the end of the. Um, uh, and end of the part of the code, uh, actually, um, there is a JSONs R. I mean, when you are running the code, the JSONs are generated and given to the uh, to the um, driver, and the driver with that JSONs doing some actions inside the browser. So here you can see how that. I mean, it's kind of an not necessary if you are not contributing to change something in the Selenium, <laughs> but just to know how it, the Selenium is working in the endpoint is just sending a JSON. Whenever a node is being used, does it mean that uh, it is being the whole node is being used? Sorry again? Whenever, uh, whenever a node is used, uh -huh. does it mean the whole node is being reused or does it mean... It's killing and creating new one. Creating a new one. Yes. Yes, usually uh, it's 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 easier to ki kill and uh, and create new one because as much as you want, as much as your machine can hold. <laughs> it depends on the power, f uh, how powerful is your machine, so you can scale up to hundred. Um, first of how I'm trying uh, to find out the average which is better. I'm just adding one by one, and then uh, there is a, you, you have to find uh, which the optimal number for your application and for your uh, infrastructure. Uh, usually, I, I went up to 25. It was my maximum. But in the real world, if there is a, like medium powerful machines, like medium power machine, you can go for the seven, eight, so, uh, so, uh, and then when you are adding, it's like starting to hang, and it takes more time than a single thread. Yeah, there was a question. Yeah. yeah do you have any tools to manage the scaling automatically? I mean, by time, for example, if I have, for example, I want to get uh, one hour for all, how, for all my tests. Mm -hmm. Ah, by time. You mean how many? I mean, you need to try to find out the average for you. I didn't. I don't know any tool that will scale with the time, but uh, of course you can. If you have a 200 tests, you can add nodes. One. No, I, I don't know the solution like that. So maybe there are, but I never had the experience with it. So uh, yeah, there is. There was a question. Yeah, you mean to break down the, yes, actually there is a possibility with the test engine. You can group your test, you can, you can uh, make a small groups. So the, the solution that I was saying that we were running 8,000 tests within an hour. It's impossible to do it for one, in one, one machine. We had a 20 machines and inside every machine there was a six, seven threads. We, we took all the suite, we divided it to, do, to the 20 groups and sent to the machines and they were running uh, in the machine, every, every machine, like seven or six uh, threads, which means like um, 20 multiplied six threads were running. So this is like distribution of it. So we will be able to finish faster. So there is a still possibility to group it. Also there is a, I mean, the solution that we did 
it was after, after dividing the suite. So when you had a new test, it was rearranging the amount for the older nodes. I mean, there is still possibility. Yep. This one? Dashboards. Dashboard. Yeah. I will, I will, I will. Oops. And to make it easy to understand, yes. Okay, dashboard. Good. So, it worked? Worked for you? You? Okay. So. So we have not too much time, so let's go to our next. Okay, we I again we have this YAML file for the Docker Compose. Let's try that one. And this one is Control C will stop your Selenium in the cleaning up. Uh, Docker PS. We don't have a machine, so. Uh, you remember Docker up and the Docker down, yes? For the previous one. Um, let's show you this one. Again, I created in the, in the codes another Docker file, Docker, Docker Compose file, which is for Zelenium. Also, you can find uh, all these examples for, uh, in, in their website. And yeah, you run this. The minus D means hide the logs. I don't need them. And then it will create the Zelenium for you. Yeah, it's already running. It's the same. And then uh, you can do Docker Compose YAML down, and, and it will delete it. Yeah. Uh, to go to the YAML file, he is a bit. Uh, this is the Zelenium one. Here it's a bit uh, complex because uh, because this is the volumes that we are showing the when the videos will be kept and uh, other ones. I mean, there is a Docker logs and the stuff. Here, all the command, uh, all the piece of the commands that we are running. This means that um, when you create the hub, just create three nodes on a spot, even if I didn't request anything. The maximum Docker. So, if even I send you 15 threads, the maximum images should be 10 because my machine can hold maximum 10. Yes. So, the rest will be in the queue. This is the size of the window, and then time zone, video recording enabled or not, I'm al always disabling it. <laughs> because it's, 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 it's cool, but it takes a lot of gigabytes from your machine. Yeah, and then source lab enabled or no, uh, browser stack, testing bot, and uh, start the tunnel. Start the tunnel is when, uh, this is a bit of advanced configuration, when usually when you deploy your testing environment, it's under the VPN, yes? Yeah. Uh, you can configure your VPN to make the services be in your VPN network to be able to run it. Usually this one you need when you're running on a source lab. For example, the source lab servers are in uh, US, the browser stack servers are in India, and your server in, in, is in your local network. So you need to create a tunnel which will allow um, Serv services to see your deployed application and it will be able to run on it. And then this is the environments when, when you have a SOSLAP username or password or browser and you give it to it and it will connect this hub directly to the SOSLAP. And when there is a capability that the solution cannot provide, for example, Internet Explorer for the Windows, it will directly send it to SOSLAP or browser stack whenever it is. Do you know um, Source Lab? It's exactly the same service. 
different prices and different servers and locations, that's all. The, the same is the test, testing bot, like the, uh, similar, similar services. Can you define a notebook type, like an XML type for the Redux? For the what? This is different story. This is done by Java. Okay. Executions, like XML yeah, yeah. It, this is this is done by the runner. Mm -hmm. For example, you can configure your test ng, so it will do it. But um, I guess by with the default configuration, uh, when we are running it, it should have some results failing test rep is. Yeah, there should be something like index HTML. This is ugly one, but later we can, where is the open? Open in the browser. One test, there was like 10 and yeah, oh, six methods were, and six of them passed, and here is the, but this is too ugly. This is too ugly. If you are, if you want to have a advanced uh, reporting, let me know. I will show like, good solutions, like called uh, Report Portal, which is open source by um, IPAM, and there is also Allure reporting. Uh, basically, okay, you ask the question. I will switch it faster. Um, let me up. Next time, just I can create some talk for the reporting, but let me to open. This is a bit private information, but I will show you. Okay. This is one of the runs. And Jenkins. This is a real example working. And there is the, first of all, this is the summary of the report. And there is every build has is reporting. This is the Allure reporting, yes? And when I click on the link, I see this. And this means that uh, one was failed, I mean, one was failed because of the product bug. 10 of them were failed because of the test issue. And the 81 were passed and 11 were skipped before because of the failing on the before methods. And when you open it, you see all your cases. And when there is a failure, like maybe this one, Failing, failing, failing. You see the log. You see how many times it was retrying. You see the history that before it was passing, now it doesn't passing. It's not passing. And then you are coming and seeing the screenshot. Good? I hate videos. I always skip videos. But you can also put video here. Yeah. It's easy. It's the, you just, you just uh, need to configure that. This is the HTML, so you can put the video frame there and it will play video. But video is never helping me. <laughs> it's just keeping a lot of, like, eating a lot of volumes there. Good. I forget where we stopped. Yeah, we did the Docker with the, Zel the Docker Compose with the Zelenium, so it's time. We don't have more time, but we can go for the Zelenoid. Uh, so far, I would like this is my favorite one <laughs> because it's light, working faster, and providing almost the same um, uh, features as the Zelenium. Yeah, almost. Yeah. Okay, but to configure it, it's a bit hard. So let's go for it because it's, it will take a bit more time, and we don't have a time. Uh, what you need to do, I will send all this. First of all, and I will explain what he's doing. You create the folder with a selenoid. Yes? I mean, I, I have created, but I will create with you so it will be easy for you. I will send also the commands. commands. Um, you will have these slides also, don't worry. Okay, and then you change the directory to the to the created folder. CD selenoid. Oh. Yes, so we are there. 
Okay. You create another folder called config. Yes? Make a dear config. And you change directory to config. And then I guess this will work for the Mac and Linux, but I'm not sure that it will work for the Windows, but you can try it. Uh, if not, you just can go to the folder from UI and just create a new file called this one. Okay. You nano browser configs, it creates the file, and this is for you. And then, I have it in presentation. Also, you have to post it here. This is just one browser. But <coughs> here you should, you should add all the supported browser that you want to run on it. Yes? This is just one example. It could be Chrome 72, Chrome 71, Chrome 70, Firefox, Firefox. I mean, all the types of the browsers, you, you, you create this configuration and put all the browsers there. Yeah. And I send it to you also. But I'm not sure that it will keep. And then go to past it also here, and then control X and say yes. Save it. Basically, what we did, nothing. Uh, and it creates this JSON file here, config. Oh, I'm not sure that it should be config. Okay. I'm I'm sorry, but you have to change this to uh, browsers just on. I don't know why I put there. Uh, use just on. Uh, let me change it on the spot to not forget. This is just on. Good. And the next step is this command. I will send it to you. So what it's actually doing, when you create a hub, you create a solenoid, it's going and reading in the configuration the JSON that you provide it right now. And it's checking in the JSON which browser's nodes it have to create. This is also for the like, organizational stuff and create whatever you want. And when we run this command, I will send you the command also. Okay. This is the command. Yes, maybe it will be faster for me, a bit slower for you, but this is not as, as big as it was. In this case, you don't have the same UI. If you want to check whenever it's running or not, you go here, maximum you can do status. Yes. It's very hard to see there and right there. No? Didn't run? Let me check. Uh, let's check if Docker running. Docker PS. No. Docker PS minus A. It's here. It has an error. To, to, it, this is a good example of what you do when you have an error, so it doesn't work. You go docker, oops, docker uh, <laughs> logs, if I'm not mistaken, and then giving the name. You can give or the hash or the name, so they are identical. I can write selenoid, oops. I didn't write selenoid. Selenoid. 
Yeah. It wasn't able to find the JSON file. We had uh, some issue. I know why. Because clear uh, because we are in the config. We have to run the command from the Selenoid folder. So it will go config and then we'll find it. Let's try it. Going one up and then and then where is that command? I'm doing this. No? Oh, we have the name. Docker RM Selenoid. Yes. Docker PS. Oh, we have it. It succeeded. So now when you do its status, this is all the UI we have. Now we can the same. Um, where is the terminal here? We, we again can run against the same environment. Um, it will be, you can see that there is, uh, one is Q, five is pending, okay, it's running here, just on making bigger. And then deleting, again, after scaling. There was just one and then it's created, uh, and Okay, maybe it's already late, but I will show you like this. You see, um, I will run it once more. And then I will show what's happening here. Docker PS. Oops. Docker PS. Look how many containers it created. After finishing, it will remove all of them. And then alone, it's been finished. You see, this is called after scaling when I think. On the spot, it's creating all the Docker. So it's the magic of the Docker is when in the, in the milliseconds you can create the instance and delete it, yes? But how we can make it nicer? There is a possibility to have a UI. For to have a UI, okay. There is um, one Docker called Selenoid UI, which is different application which is connecting to this container as showing the JSON in the UI. I will send that, that in the chat. This is the command. This is very small one, clear. And then, yes. Here, this is web application which is listening to 8080 port. And when we run this one, we can go to uh, here and we can say, Local host 8080. This is Selenoid. And here, when you go to capabilities and select the browser, this is the same browser that we give in a JSON, browser JSON. If we give more options in the browser JSON, we will see all the options here. You have the opportunity to generate code for the cap capabilities. For example, as we are Java, we can go Java, so this is VNC true. We do, uh, enabled true, false, etc. so you are giving, and then just copying this one, pasting in your code, and it's running against this environment. Yep. Okay. Okay. Let's go to presentation. We did this demo. This is the UI. Yeah. There, we have several minutes, yes. We have till... 12, yes. There's a one cool thing that I want to tell you before finishing. And if you have a question, just come to me. Um, there is this um, configuration manager for the Selenoid, which makes our life easier. This is better than Docker Compose in this case. So I didn't include the Docker Compose, but anything that is able to run with the Docker command, it means that you can run with the Docker Compose, just creating the file. But what these guys did, they create this script. I'm sending it in a chat. Just run this one in the command line. I have it, so, but I mean, I can do it for you also. Like, do it here to see what's happening. Yeah, it's downloading one small script. It's, and then, when you want to start Selenoid, but one more thing I need to 
before running selenoid, I have docker running, yes. Yeah. And docker, just clean all the docker containers. Selen, selenoid. Docker RM. And then selenoid UI. Stop it. Was it so hard to stop? <laughs> and it stopped. And then RM UI. So we are clean now. So um, we have this script here. Yeah, you have to be in the folder in the in the uh, directory where is the script itself, and then you can run this command. I mean, I I will send two commands together. Yes. When you do that minus minus VNC, it means that it will create a uh, create a port to view what's happening inside the container, like in Selenium. Yeah. And when you want to run it, yeah, run. And if you want to run the selenoid, selenoid UI, minus UI, start. Oops, I did, oh, there shouldn't be VNC. And UI started. And we are ready. With the two simple command, the scalable grid is ready for use. You finish, you want to uh, stop it, just stop. And then just stop. And that's all. So um, right now, I do we have, we don't have a time or we have five? Five minutes? Good. So let's start. Oh, stop. Let's keep the order. We are starting. Selenoid, and we are starting Selenoid UI. Yes? And then we are going to Chrome and refresh it and the states. Okay. When we run, I didn't show you this one yet. When you run, You should see it's not running. Yes, you see five chromes coming. And then if oh, I will not be there. And you can see the logs when you click on it. But when you want to see also browser, uh, which means we need to have this capability VNC through and the video recording also. I'm not turning it on, sorry. <laughs> you go here. You go to the configuration, okay, uh, here where we are giving the capabilities, yes? We just, before it, we can do the capability, oops, I wanted to copy this one. Enabling the VNC, and then when I install the skip test to compile the code, And then when run, because we already started the selenoid with minus minus VNC, which means the ports, ports are open for the using of VNC, and we're configuring this um, to be able to see the VNC, and then when we go to the states, and when there is, okay, there is a VNC, you can see what's happening there. Easy busy. Okay. Basically, this is the all the information I wanted to give it to you. This is example for the Windows, just in case. But uh, this is not the whole information I'm giving to you. But this this slides will be shared. When you want to um, get more information, I put the links here. 
The first one is the official Selenium Docker that we started together with. The second one is the Selenium. And the third one is the Selenoid. And the fourth one is the Configuration Manager script. Actually, I will show you some extra information which doesn't concern to our today's topic, but if you want to go to the deep, deeper, deeper. Okay. This is the guys who are creating the stuff. Their website, and they have several products. They are not paying me for the advertisement. I just like it. I'm sharing the information. They even don't, don't know me, I guess. This is the Selenoid, open source. You can go do whenever you want. This is the configuration manager that we used with the CM to run and down. Uh, this is the Sel Selenoid UI. So three of the product we already know. The two of them that I want to like just represent to you, you can go and dig at home. It's the GGR and GGR UI. G GGR is the um, load, load balancer, Go grid router, and the UI is the exact the same Selenoid UI to see the visual stuff. Uh, what is this is actually doing? This is a smart load balancer, and it's create the Selenoid instances as much as you need. There was a question: Can I create second hub or third hub for the for the load balance grid? So this is the solution for that. The load balancer will get the request and will decide where to send to run. So you can have a 10 grids running. You are, uh, you are um, configuring your DGR with this. You, you are saying to the DGR that you have these 10 instances. Decide which one will go where. And when there is a request is coming, this is deciding where to send it, which one is free, etc. And then you, you basically have multiplying all your instances. Yep. And so yeah, this is the links, again, for the deeper information. I mean, I know that uh, when you just open and read the documentation, it doesn't say you something. But uh, after this workshop, I guess when you read, you will understand a lot of stuff. And you remember that you hear it somewhere about that, yes? And then email me. Twitter, LinkedIn, if you have any questions, don't be shy to ask the questions. Uh, also, I will keep this channel in the Telegram if you have any questions. Oh, just, a, um, just one more thing. Um, if you go to the Telegram, I started to use the Telegram for, for, for the several service support. And one of this is this AeroCube, which is creating the Selenoid. And they have an official channel here. It's sorry for it's Russian. But there's something also happening in the English, if you ask the question in English. Uh, fortunately, I can understand also Russian when I ask the question, they answer me. <laughs> but if you uh, write the questions in English, I'm pretty sure that they will answer in English. So they have also this channel for the support. And yes, you can go there and get some support from them. And yep, that's all. If you have any question, I don't know in terms of the time, we are OK. Yeah, cool. I will send it right now. Uh, for the Zalenium, if you are going for the Zalenium also, let's sh I will show you. There is a um, Zalenium Slack channel. Here, Selenium, and there is a Selenium channel here, mostly in English. <laughs> and if I'm not mistaken, there is also Russian. Uh, there was there was some Russian channels, just I didn't join their channels. And here also Selenoid channel, but if you go to the Selenoid channel, they will direct you to Telegram. So if you want to get a fast response, go to Telegram. But still, they they yeah. And the February they were answering something also here, yeah. And there is a for Selenium for Java for Java issues, Docker Selenium and the Appium. Like you can also find this um, Slack in the Selenium uh, website. So they they have some communication. 
But for now, I will send this to you. Yes. The time, yep. Yes. Uh, what about if you need to run uh, this uh, use browser on Windows? Or Windows? Yeah. Now you use uh, slaves with browser on uh, Linux. Yeah. yeah. We already talked about that uh, in the middle of the presentation. There is a several solutions. One is that you can connect your source lab or the browser stuff, stack services to your grid, and it will redirect all the uh, Internet Explorer requests to the browser, but it's paid. And I know that um, the Arrowcoop creating some solution that will run on the Internet IE. Um, I can find the information if it's interested. I can show you. Sh I, I can. S I, I will send that solution also to the to the group, and I will show also you. But there is a. I, I never tried it. I will. I don't have experience, but I saw there is something that you can use the same solution to go to the to the Internet Explorer testing. Windows. Yes. Um, you have to have Windows machines or Windows. Uh, the, the only solution that I ever had. Yes, it's it's not possible in a Docker because you cannot run the Windows inside the Docker. So that's the problem that. Uh, the solution that I did it was um, that, but 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 that was very hard to configure. It was the virtual box running the Windows and you are like mounting all the ports from the virtual machine to the machine and, and then running the test inside the virtual machine and it's, it's very slow. But um, our company had... Yep. Sorry to interrupt. We are yep. a bit more time. Okay. So we can talk later. Uh, and there is some t-shirts for you guys, the more active ones. Oh, sorry. <laughs> 